You are listening to Our Urban Voices with Dr. Alphonse Javet, a podcast that presents Christian narratives through diverse voices that impact urban ministry. Here is your host. In this podcast, we cover everything from churches and church planting efforts, mission and missions organization evangelism, and unreached people groups, emerging movements and initiatives, justice, current events related to faith, and the persecuted church to author interviews, and more. Let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to our Urban Voices. I'm your host, Dr. Alphonse Javed. Today I'm joined by Naga Pale Pu from Hidden Christians. It's an online community that supports uh, Hindu and Muslim background believers. Our topic today focuses on the unique needs of these Christians and how the church can better support them. Naga has an incredible story. So we are going to jump right in. Thanks for joining us today, Naga. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for bringing me along the the show. And uh, I can't wait to just you know, have this conversation and um, support the church and all the churches across the country in any way I can. Awesome, brother. So let's start out uh, with your testimony. What is your religious background and how did you become a Christian? Yeah, um, when I first came to America, my my family, um, they were Hindu, right? So I grew up in a Hindu family. And for most of my life, that's what I, you know, kind of worshiped. I went to Hindu temples, I went to Hindu idols, and I kept in prayer with them. And then it wasn't until like third or fourth uh, grade when I took uh, an Excel test, right? This is the test where all the Indian kids took in elementary school and whoever gets in, right? They're in the advanced math classes. And uh, one day when I got my test back, this is like a kind of introductory test. I got the test back and I, and I looked Mm -hmm. at the scores and my dad said, I failed. And then, yeah. And then uh, he looks at me and he says, why aren't you like all the other Indian kids? I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I did something wrong here. So then I took the test again. And then this was like the last time I could ever take it because it's like fifth grade, you go into middle school. And I, and I just like, I prayed to my Indian gods beforehand. You know, I asked them and something was happening. You know, nothing ever happened. But then Mm -hmm. I looked up the night, like a week before the test, I looked up in the corner of my room and I think I saw Mm -hmm. a movie of some guy praying to the light. Right. And I was just like, light, if you're real, you know, I will, you know, I will, I want to pass this test. And if you will allow me to pass this test, I will give you my video games. I will give you everything just so I can pass this test for my dad. And then I get my test scores back a few months later. I look at the test score and my dad said, I passed and I'm super excited. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm freaking out. I go over to my computer. I'm like, do I still have my games? Do I have this? And to me at the time, I'm like, you know, seven, eight years old. I'm, I'm like, I need this game. This is my, I've spent so much of my life here. <laughs> and, um, and uh, when I saw my game, my game was there. I was just like, oh, dude, there is a God and God is good. And mm-hmm. I was so pumped. And then a month later, I get a month later, my account gets hacked and I never see it again. And that was when I understood that there was something higher than me. Um, Mm -hmm. There was something higher. And that was kind of like my first sort of belief that there is, you know, like a a God. And it wasn't, you know, something that I prayed to in Hindu temples or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Years later in high school, a friend, basically, I walked into class and I was just like, um, for the last couple of years, I've just been praying to this light again, right? I was like, you know, light, if you're real, like help me out here, like get me a girlfriend, right? It was in high school, <laughs> always high school. So, um, mm-hmm. I asked for a girlfriend and, uh, you know, sophomore year runs around and I walk in first day of class, I got my backpack on and everyone's super excited. Everyone's trying to find their spots in class. And I see a beautiful girl sitting right, in, uh, like in the middle of class and there's a spot empty next to her. And I'm like, oh this is the one. Okay. There's a prime opportunity. Let's go. So I'm rushing over there. I sit next to her and we just start talking. We just start talking and we hit it off by the end of class. She turns to me and she says, Hey, uh, Naga, uh, I'd love to take you, you know, to youth group sometime. And I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, Oh, did she just ask me out? Okay. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm super excited at this point. Right. And um, I get I get ready. I get real nice, you know, uh, dressed up in formal wear and um, youth group rolls around and all these people 
and my mom drops me off at youth group and all these people are in the room and I'm like, oh wait, this isn't a date. Where am I? And <laughs> the minute that I get there and, uh, you know, she brings me into the, you know, the auditorium and the auditorium is so awesome. It's like a non-denominational church. And so the band gets on stage and everything is awesome and everyone starts to sing. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is, this is such a weird experience for me. We don't do this in Hindu temples. We don't do this anywhere. And, um, but the minute that everyone started singing and I felt like, okay, you know, I'll sing too. I like singing. And um, during that time when I was just like singing and worshiping, I just felt this peace enter into my life. Mm -hmm. And that peace, I just felt like God was just smiling on me and like a smile. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was when I uh, basically knew that, you know, like there was something special here, that this was the light um, that I was praying to years ago. And so ever since then, um, me and her, we're not friends anymore. Like we're like friends, but we don't talk as much. But what it is like every single week after that, I just went by myself. You know, I didn't have other people to go with. I just kind of sat by myself. I went by myself, but I always knew that Jesus was there sitting next to me. Um, wow. And I always learned that, you know, Jesus was a friend of the outcasts. And that was the type mm. of, you know, person I wanted to be to a friend to people who were mm. outcasts. You know, I grew up wow. um, coming to America as an immigrant with an accent and a stutter. And I didn't have a lot of friends in elementary school. And I only had like one friend. Mm. And I knew what it was like to not have friends. And um, I wanted to be a friend to those who didn't have friends. And when I learned Jesus yeah. was that person, and I learned a lot about wow. his character and his love, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, that's the type of person I want to become. Amen. That's awesome, man. So how did you end up creating the online community, Hidden Christians? Yeah. Um, after a year, years after I gave my life to Christ, like, I always kind of kept it a little bit hidden. I kept a... Uh, a little secret from my family, which was I'm a Christian, right? They're Hindu. I'm a Christian. I converted. I got baptized and everything. And um, it wasn't until about 2021 when um, I, you know, truly gave my life in, to Christ in 2020. I committed everything. I was like, Lord, I can't live this sinful life. I'm giving and recommitting my life to you. So 2020 happens. Everything is good. I get deeper in Christ. And then 2021, it's like January 1st rolls around. And I felt in deep in my spirit that the Lord said, you're going to fast. And I'm like, Lord, how fast am I? How long am I going to fast? And he's like, you're going to fast for like 20 days. I'm like, God, can someone survive that long? Wow. Like, this is crazy. I've never done this before. And so I start fasting and uh, the first two days are fine. But during this time, during COVID, I was living with my family and my family was working from home. So we ate lunch together. We ate dinner together and everything was good. Right. So those first couple of days I had to make excuses or I had to get out of the house so that I didn't eat lunch with my family and dinner. And so I walked away. And then one day, my dad on the third day of the fast turns to me and he says, Naga, why aren't you eating? Why aren't you eating with us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was when I had to tell them. You know, I didn't want to tell them at all. I, I had to tell them, hey, I'm a Christian and I'm on a fast. Wow. And the minute that I told them that, at first it was like a calm, right? It was a calm before a storm. No one was talking. Wow. Everyone was quiet. Mm -hmm. And then my dad just erupts in this like explosion of like, are, are you are you kidding me? Or why would you do that to yourself? Are you mm -hmm. like a, are mm -hmm. you like a terrorist or something where you're just like giving up your body in the name of God? Are you trying to like destruct yourself? Like, why are you doing this? And like hmm. started to yell and started to say like, you're brainwashed. Like who brainwashed you? Who brought you to that? And, hmm. um, and all sorts of, you know, like terrible things that I've never heard my family ever call me. And, um, it was one of the most, like, I would say like, it was the most traumatizing thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, my coming from my family. And during that entire time, I was like yelled at for like three hours. I was sitting in my living room. My parents were just yelling at me. It's like, who converted you? Mm. Who did this? Like, why would you do that? Do you love your parents? We didn't come to America so right. that you can become a Christian. Like, that's not what this was. You know, Christianity is for like older people. I mean, religion in general is for older people. Right now, you need to be focusing on money, right? So like, this type of like mind mentality was just like thrown on me. And I, I had to take it all um, in that moment. And uh, I just wanted to run away. I just wanted to run upstairs, want to close the door, but something in me just said, stay, stay. Hmm. 
And um, after I got, you know, after the three hours were up, uh, I did my time. I went upstairs, closed the door in my room, and then I started to cry. And um, in that moment, I was just praying. I was like, Lord, will you please show me something? Will you like reveal to me, like comfort me, you know? And um, I opened up my Bible. I prayed and um, the Lord showed me two verses. One of them was in Psalms, which was the Lord will turn mourning, uh, will turn, yeah, mourning into joy. And yeah, mourning into joy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was just like, oh, wait, God has a promise for my pain. God has a purpose and a promise that and this is like the only religion where it's like when you're going through pain, there is a promise for it. There is so much light. Mm. And um, something that my mom said before I went upstairs, which was like, hey, if you love us, by 12, p- 12 p.m. tomorrow for lunchtime, you are going to give up this fast and you are going to eat with us. And I was just praying. I was like, Lord, how am I going to like give up this fast? Like, you told me to do 20 days. You told me to do this. I love my family. Like, do I respect my family or do I respect you? Like, you know, the Bible says to honor your parents, honor your family. Like, mm-hmm. how do I, like, what is the balance? And I was praying and praying and uh, I opened the Bible again. And the Bible said, and, and, and the Lord showed me this verse and it was uh, David before he went up against Goliath. And he says, mm-hmm. the Lord who delivered me from the hand of the, the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear is the same one that will deliver me from the hand of this giant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah in that right. moment i knew that that was my my parents that was my family that was this expectation of me and um yeah i was just like i don't know how you're gonna make a way lord but i know you will um because the same lord who delivered me from you know you know painful past trauma painful you know heartbreaks all this stuff addictions like he's the one who can deliver me from the hand of this giant and so i prayed and prayed and and the next day I woke up and it's like 12 o'clock was approaching and I'm like having a little bit of anxiety. I'm going into the shower and I take the longest shower of my life and <laughs> I'm still hanging out in the shower. And I know I can't avoid going down to lunch, go downstairs to lunch. And my mom was just like, what would you like to eat? And I was just like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Hmm. I put everything away and, um, you know, like everyone was just quiet. No one was yelling at me, nothing. And uh, I just went back upstairs and it was good. It was good. I finished uh, the 20 day fast a little bit later on in that month. And um, I was just suffering the entire time. I was like, Lord, like the next, like the aftermath sucked because the next two weeks, my parents didn't really talk to me. And uh, later on um, in like March, right? Three months later, two months later, um, I got this idea, right? Um, basically I've been posting content on TikTok for the last six months of my life and the Lord just kept telling me to do it. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll post content. I don't know why post it. And then, um, I get a dream one night. It was just like, Oh, maybe you should post that. Those thoughts of, you know, like what your parents told about you. And I was just like, wait, no, that's just mean. No, like, you don't want to say Mm -hmm. that. Like, I don't want to like Mm -hmm. uh, hurt my parents like that. And so, Mm -hmm. uh, later on, uh, there was this trend basically saying like motivational quotes that, you know uh, basically negative things that people said about you in motivational quotes. And so I basically created, um, you know, funny pastor one-liners. I was like, let's take a positive spin on this and, um, basically created that. But then the spirit just said, wait, wait, wait. And, um, basically told me to say that idea of what my parents told me, you know, when I was kind of told them I was a Christian, I had a lot of anxiety at first before I created that post, but then I created it. And I posted it and I was just like, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to dishonor my family or anything. And I posted it. And the minute that I did it, it blew up. It had like over half a million views and so many people commenting saying, Naga, I'm the same way. Like I'm I'm a Hindu. I'm a Christian, right? I converted to Christianity and I don't know how to tell my family. Oh, I'm a Muslim and I converted to Christianity. I don't know how to tell my family. And Wow. It slowly started getting more and more people like kind of aware yeah. of this situation. And I didn't even know that there were other Indian Christians out there. I thought I was the only one. I thought my sister and I were the only ones. Like I had no idea. And um, it was just a crazy feeling to know that I, you know, I wasn't alone. And um, wow. later on, you know, that's when the Lord kind of created 
you know, this idea, I was just like, Lord, maybe, you know, I want to create like a help group for people who are struggling with like sexual addiction or things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lord was just like, "Mm, no, right. Wait, wait, wait. And uh, I felt clearly that the words hidden Christian came into my mind. That was it. Hidden Christians. I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome. And so I posted that, created that. And then, you know, people started to join hidden Christians. It's a discord community. So it's like an online, um, like it's like an online platform where it's like real time. There's going to be like kids from all across the world, India, Pakistan, uh, Africa, South Africa, Europe, uh, America, they're all joining here and you can type and you can have chat community within this uh, discord software and this platform. And so basically that, that, uh, support, um, basically that community came around because of my own persecution, right? So God used something Mm -hmm. that was really difficult and and super painful and he turned Mm -hmm. it for good, something that would last Mm -hmm. for a long period of time, that pain. And it was the craziest experience, but that's how the community got made up. And, um, you know, most of the members in our community are actually, you know, like 16 through 19 years old. Wow. So yeah, they're the youth. I'm kind of a, a youth <laughs> pastor here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it's been a community. So, mm-hmm. so what are some ways that you uh, all support each other? Yeah. Some of the ways that we support each other is like, we have prayer nights, we have Bible studies going around, um, uh, we have Sunday sermons and things like that. Um, some of the some of the people in this community, like they're coming from places of India where it's hard to find community, uh, Christian fellowship, or even in America where they are hitting Christians and they can't go to church all the time because they don't have a ride because they're 15, 16, right? Um, but one thing that we do is prayer nights, Bible studies, times where people can just jump on and listen. And uh one of the stories that I've learned um, was about this uh, kid who is from uh, Saudi Arabia, right? And he's in a strictly Muslim location, like even sharing that he's a Christian, like that's a lot, right? That's like downright almost right, illegal. Right. Um, right. And uh, basically he just found this community and he was super grateful for it because he got to be around other Christian believers. He got to hear other stories of persecution, other stories of fel- and uh, got fellowship. And uh, actually like learning more about the Bible. So that's what these like little, like, you know, like stories and testimonies that we share on hidden Christians, like that's really supports one another as well. We have like different channels where you can share your testimony. You can share Bible verses, things like that, and just find friendships from all across the world. And so I've made pretty, a lot of amazing friends from this platform as well. That That's really awesome. Has, has anyone come to Christ through this community? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Yes, there are several people that did come into our community just like yelling, you know, like trying to be trolls, right? They're just like, oh, you know, like, why are you Christian? Oh, you know, God said this. And then like, you know, we started talking to them. We started loving on them. And then, you know, like a few weeks later, they're just like, yeah, yeah, I'd like to give my life to Christ, (laughs) right? Amen. Amen. Wow, that's awesome, man. So what do you want other Christians to know about young Hindus and Muslims in the U.S.? Yeah, growing up, I actually wish that, um, you know, uh, growing up, like I, I, you know, I got baptized, I got you know, converted, all this stuff. I, I kind of wish that there was more of a more like, um, I guess I think pamphlets or guides of like, you know, like what happens, you know, like after you get baptized, like what are the epistles? What are the what is the gospel? Right. Um, right. Because like when I first opened my Bible, I opened my Bible and I was just like, oh, where do I read about Jesus? Right. <laughs> I was in like the book of Psalms right. or something. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, but having like little guides at the church or like for new believers and things like that, I think it's always a great reminder, especially for the youth. Um, that's like a huge part of um, my own growth was just I had to learn myself. I had to like Google everything. I had to like, you know, try my best to find all this information, and like learn, like, what is the Israelites? What is the story? And uh, try to learn more about God that way. And um, yeah, I, I think like one thing that I've been like wanting to work on was like a 40 day plan after you get baptized, just like Jesus was like transported after once he got baptized and into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. I think once a believer gets baptized, like the end, and that's when the enemy tempts them and attacks them, right? The closer you get to Christ. Um, so those next 40 days for like a young new believer 
those are very, very important for their spiritual growth. So honestly, having like any type of like support group for them, like, <laughs> like after they get baptized, like a support group or like one of those pamphlets or like a, a Bible study plan, that's huge for any young believer. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually enjoyed this conversation because uh, I never thought about this, especially this piece, like the last one, the the most recent answer you gave about the, the pamphlet, because uh, usually it's easy um, to, you know, lead the person or if the person came to Christ and then direct the person to a church. But you're right. They got to be very simple steps. Um, and I think that should be kind of like a universal thing with every church that if, if somebody is uh, uh, looking for that, they can easily follow those steps. That's interesting. And I'm sure you created those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm still in the process of creating those. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So in summary, how can the church support you better? Um, when it comes to this church's support, I think one thing I want to always bring up about the church is like, I, I would like to see like a stronger social media presence from the church. Um, this isn't to particularly the, uh, the church to support me or the hidden Christians community per se, but it is to support other Christians out there who don't even know that they are going to be Christian. Right. Um, I think that in the past year in 2020, whether it's on YouTube or TikTok specifically, like there are so many Christians out there, young Christians who found Jesus because of TikTok posts from different creators, different like church leaders, things like that. I know a lot of my community, they found Jesus like, you know, they're, they're Indian, they're Muslim. They, they came from Muslim backgrounds, Hindu backgrounds. And a lot of them found it through content online, you know? And so the best way to support people, I think is just to create that beginner content. To, be, to create those, uh, you know, types of videos and things like that. And in terms of like support for, you know, for hidden Christians and things like that, um, I think it's just like mentorship. Um, I know a lot of these, uh, you know, younger hidden, hidden Christians, like uh, if there was like um, maybe like kind of like a, a support group, right? Like we are the support group. I'm, what I'm trying to say is like, I wanted to create more of a, an area where it's like, if there are people in like Saudi Arabia, right? Maybe like I want to get like maybe a church member to actually go on a mission. There's like missionaries over there to like help them get baptized. Because one of the biggest issues that I'm facing is like when people ask me like, hey, you know, they're like, how do I get baptized? And they're like, you know, 16 or 17. And uh, they're living in a place where it's like India or like Saudi Arabia or some place where it's hard to get baptized. Um that's where I'm just like, okay, well, they have to wait until 18 because, you know, sometimes they have to get their per parents' permission before they can get baptized in certain countries. Um, right. And so, like, yeah, I think it's just like getting connected with different missionaries, um, that would be a huge, like, like resource uh, and um, a huge support for hitting Christians, for sure. Yeah, very practical stuff, buddy. Very practical. So, Naga, if um, listeners want to get in touch with you or find your book, what are the easiest ways? Yeah. Um, the easiest way is to get on, get in contact with me on Instagram, naga.dash, or you can, you know, jump onto our hidden Christians discord. So you can just type in hidden Christians. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also mm -hmm. have a hidden Christians YouTube channel as well, as well as a hidden Christians um, Instagram page. And so those are the best mm -hmm. ways to get in contact with me. And in terms of a book, stay tuned. Uh, I think by the end of 2022, we'll have a book published here and um yeah. it's going to be about my testimony and i just pray that that's it good. just helps uh, other hidden christians out there yeah amen yeah, that's a great um way to reach you and i'm going to make sure that it's included in the episode description so for the last thing uh, because we talk about so many different things and some topics are pretty heavy topics so i like to ask you to tell me a joke lighten the mood okay okay um all right my question to you is does god love everyone yes yes but he prefers fruits of the spirits to religious nuts oh yes. okay it's more of a fun <laughs> very nice very <laughs> nice i like it that's good thank you so much for being on the show i appreciate that again 
That was uh, Naga Pale Poo of uh, Hidden Christians. And thank you to all our listeners. If you appreciate this podcast, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave an honest review wherever you listen to your podcast. Tune in next week for more honest discussions from diverse voices. You've been listening to Our Urban Voices with Dr. Alphonse Javed, which presents Christian narratives through diverse voices that impact urban ministry. Please check back for new episodes every week.